Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. Please adjust your settings by either checking the three dots menu at the top or look somewhere along the bottom of your phone or your tablet or your laptop until you see something shaped like a little wheel. Click that and then increase the quality of your video to 720 or 1080p, whichever is the clearest for your device. So today I am going to complete a prophecy that I did not get the chance to finish by reason of there being so much information to cover. I am back in the Supernatural series and uh, you should be able to find those playlists on the Master's Voice channel, the dashboard. So the dashboard is where you will see the picture for my channel. If you first Google for the channel or check for the channel through a YouTube search, you will see the image for the channel, click that, and then it takes you to the dashboard and you will see the word home and then video and then playlists. You can click that and then all the channel playlists will drop down. If you are a new subscriber, if you've only been here once or twice, or you are only a few weeks old, it really will be useful for you to use the playlist so that you can be able to get the material on this website in, uh, I guess, a quicker fashion for your understanding. This is an end times prophecy blog. The people who have been coming here for six months or more already know that. So end times prophecy is by its very nature, pointing to a certain type of prophetic truth that is contained in the word of God in such places as 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, the book of Daniel, all of the book of Revelation. And then you will find a little ode to end times in each of the gospels in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and I'm not sure if it's in John, but definitely there is a chapter dedicated in each of the gospels that gives us insight into what the end times are going to be like. When you hear the words end times, you all, you obviously come to an understanding, even if you are someone who is not a Christian, that this is not going to be a place that is going to be catering to what a lot of Christianity likes, which is hearing upbeat prophecy and God is going to destroy your enemies and God is just two steps away. And guess what God told me last night? He's doing it for you right now. This is not a place to find that. This is a prophet, a prophetic channel raised up by the Lord to speak to the nation of America first and foremost, and then to speak to any other nation as the Lord's heart desires, bringing about deeper understanding about what things will be as we draw near to the time where man will no longer have the upper hand on this planet. This may be the home that God made for man. However, man will not be running this place. The show will not be in the hands of the general populace. It's going to be in the hands of a very small number of people who have, as the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, pledged their allegiance to the beast. We will be living in what is known as the one world system, the one world G-O-V-T. Um, just for wisdom's sake. It is going to be a final amalgamated kingdom under Satan that brings every nation into subjection. So even if you're a person, you consider yourself an economics or a policy or a legal major, and you think that this is just madness, try and ask yourself why you can't understand what happened to the world in 2020. You see, people are still fighting this at the economic level, the policy level, the local level. We'll write your senator and, and send a letter to the governor and let's go out and protest. But the Christian knows that the Christian is watching the feet of the beast that Prophet Daniel talked about trample the residue. The feet of the beast will trample the sovereignty of all the nations. Every nation is going to be given a complete makeover. So if there's anything about Spain that makes it especially Spanish, if there's anything about Nigeria that makes it particularly Nigerian, all those particular identifying characteristics are going to be carefully erased and all the nations will be formed into one pattern. It will be a cookie cutter pattern. All countries will be forced to conform as much as the beast under the power of the dragon, who is Satan, as much as that duo 
is able, countries will be stripped of their sovereignty. Things that you have always done in the nation of Kenya will no longer happen. You will, Kenya and South Africa and Iceland and Newfoundland, be given a brand new playbook. And by that playbook, the nation shall be divided into only 10 territories or 10 international blocks of countries under 10 kings. And Revelation chapter 17 tells us quite clearly that then when this is accomplished, those 10 kings will then turn around, shocking everyone except Christians who actually read the Bible and give their power to the beast. And so on this channel, we are talking about things that affect the end of human rulership. We are talking about things that affect the end of human history. We are trying to prepare God's people beyond the sugar candy fluff upon which they have become extremely bloated, such that when they actually hear someone talking to them about serious things, they become offended or they become fearful or they become shocked because they think this isn't God. God wouldn't say that. There's a ton of stuff that God would say, and we're going to try and get through some of it. I'm hoping to make two videos today so that at least I can move through the large number of prophecies that I have received from the Lord thus far. I'm working through a library of prophecy from 2012 until 2022. And so today I'm getting back in the Supernatural series and... I will be completing the iron and clay prophecy. So if you haven't watched that, it's the prophecy that you will find on the wheel. Uh, I think it has Captain America on it, the mighty men, the kingdom of iron and clay. That's what it's about. And we are speaking about the infiltration of the human race with what is not human. Satan has such a wide number of creatures that are infiltrating infiltrating not just the the earth but even infiltrating the church and before i started this video i i said to the lord lord what is your heart in this you see because god is as i've already shared recently god is not into headlines god is not a sensationalist why would he be a sensationalist after all he knows all things from beginning to end so why would god be interested in this is what god told me yesterday and sensationalist headlines on youtube god is not even interested on you in youtube to him it's just a tool because it reaches more people and this is how this generation consumes information visually rather than reading which will be a problem later when there's no internet and no Wi-Fi. Everyone will have to go back to reading and those who are not used to reading will be at a distinct disadvantage as compared to those who do read. So if you're interested in reading God's heart in full at your leisure, you can always go to um, just look in the description box. You go to the mastersvoice.com. If you can't find it, just go to Google and type in the master's voice end times prophecy blog, and it'll take you right there. And you can read about what the Lord is saying, but God's heart in this, as he has shared with me is so simple, really. And this comes from John chapter three and verse 16, uh, the Bible first that even children know for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whosoever believes in him will not die, but receive everlasting life. This is the pin upon which all the gospel hangs and turns. God so loved this world, meaning all Adam, human men, and all Eve, human women, that he gave the Lord Jesus Christ as a one-time perfect exchange to shed his blood and die as the sacrifice lamb for the sin of all men. Then it says, so that whosoever would believe. So this word whosoever automatically tells us that not everybody will believe. And normally we think, oh, everybody won't believe because some people are just so hard hearted and evil. This is true. Some people do not want Christ and prefer to perish and spend the rest of their eternal days in the lake of fire. That is their choice to make. However, some people will not believe simply because, surprise, they're not people. They're Nephilim, they're fallen angels, they're creatures, they're aliens and other creatures, especially this one that is scaly, beginning to see a lot of those in my dreams. Those things are extremely terrifying. It is scaly, it looks exactly like an upright lizard. It can be black, it can be black and yellow, it can be a deep, dark leaf green or a disturbing brown and green mix. 
with a tail, looks exactly like a lizard, extremely strong. And so far I have only seen male ones, but there are many of these things seeded in the human population. They have either mixed with people, which is hybridism, or they have been created by many different means, including through the means of normal DNA science manipula manipulation, the making of cloned beings, and they are here sometimes by a long existing spiritual bloodline. They're also here like that. But that's why some of them will not confess. Some of them do not fall within the whosoever will believe in him because these creatures do not believe in Jesus. They are unclean and rejected beings and will never accept him. So this prophecy will be finishing the prophecy that I started with the iron and clay I will just call it the Nephilim will return and it's going to focus on giants. I received this word on March the 9th, 2022. And the part that I was not able to finish in the first video where I was talking about the Lord showed me myself with a pregnancy that was basically a Nephilim pregnancy that I got without knowing because I went to a clinic and the clinic gave me this embryo. And then God was just showing symbolically how uh, this creature inside was actually carrying crocodile DNA. And there was the manifestation of crocodile skin on my body all across my chest. This hard ridge, exactly like the back of a crocodile appeared on my skin. And my belly was also wrapped around with Kevlar, which is just the Lord showing how strong the genetic immortality that these creatures are carrying, that you would not even be able to stab or punch that belly or cause any harm to the embryo that was growing within me in that dream, horrible dream. So the Lord carried out in this dream, discussing many different types of creatures. And here, um, this part I did not cover. So let's go into it now. In the end times, Children will be born who express all the tendencies of the giant. They will be eight to 10 feet tall or more. Here's the part that just shows how we are as human beings. They will be highly welcomed and will be seen as curiosities. And many of them will be famous. These will start out the same as any ordinary baby. They might even be born big, but then again, so are many human children. However, they will soon distinguish themselves from my creation. They will display amazing heights, amazing growth rates, and other tendencies that are different from normal babies. And soon they will outstrip any resemblance to human beings by reason of their giant size and strength. There will also be telltale signs about them like extra digits. This means extra fingers, extra toes, or both. They will have extra teeth. They will be very hairy and other markers will be revealed. They will also reach extraordinary size and will have extraordinary agility. Some of them will even have supernatural abilities that they will be able to hide until it is time to reveal them. These are sons and daughters being born to human mothers, but my flesh is not in them. They are the mighty men of old, the men of renown, the return of the Nephilim. And so... Today, I will share a little bit from a prophecy that the Lord gave me in September, September 28th, 2018. Now, this is a personal prophecy. So this prophecy uh, contains a lot about my own life and future and will not be published on the blog. However, the Lord did give a small part of it, which is very relevant here. And I'm going to read that. Come here, computer. It says, well, let's start here. Right? So the Lord is talking about children being born that express the tendencies of the giants. When we use the phrase express, we're simply talking about the fact that a gene in the body is making itself known. So I'm identifiable by the fact that there's a gene in my body that makes me the shade that I am. I'm identifiable by the fact that there's a gene in my body that gives my eyes a particular shade. And then the general shape of my face can be easily matched to those who are my family members. So when genes express themselves, they are basically saying, 
I am a hidden codex. I am a hidden coil of information within this organism. And at the time this organism has entered the earth, the organism is carrying both visible and invisible data. As this organism begins to grow, it will begin to express the fullness of the book that is inside us. So if you read Psalm 139, we learn there that humanity has come with a manual inside us. And King David talked about it in Psalm 39, where he was praising the Lord and worshiping him and saying, Oh God, nothing is surprising to you because all the days appointed for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So everything that concerned David concerned whether he would need the physique of a warrior. God did not give David the physique of a swimmer or perhaps perhaps the physique of an accountant, no disrespect to accountants. God gave David a, a particular DNA that would train easily, that would wear easily the life of a warrior, the requirements of strength, agility, cunning, and thinking on a split second that perhaps other genes do not need to survive at that time. And so David was saying, God, you perfectly typed me out a book that I now live according to. And the thing is I'm worshiping you because nothing in my book surprises you. So God is telling us that in these end times, the current end times where we are just in the part that revelation calls and Matthew 24 calls beginning of sorrows and distress of nations. There are people out there claiming that we are in this seal and that seal. And to me, that just says that people really don't understand, um, what the seal judgments are going to be like the bold judgments. When we are in a seal, you will not need to pick up the phone to ask anyone, Hey, can you tell me where we are now in the end times? You will know in your soul that we are in the times where seals are breaking off. So the whole world has the leisure to sit down and watch one conflict happening in the world now. Just one, everyone is watching it and tuning into YouTube every day, and yet people think, oh, the red horse is rising. When the red horse from the book of Revelation is rising, you won't be able to even bother with TV because there will either be a full out raging, slashing blood flowing on the ground war in your country, or there will be at least five going on in the countries around you. And you will probably be on the move somewhere as part of some unknown migration pattern that you never knew was coming to your life. Just like the people in the Ukraine. Now, when the horses are riding, as the Lord has revealed to me, when their hooves are striking this earth. The Bible says that this earth will start to reel like a drunkard and the people on it will be like those who have drunk poisonous liquid and are in the present, in the, in the, in the process of basically losing their minds. When we get to the part where earth begins hemorrhaging out her good and is being struck again and again with blows, according to what Revelation tells us, then we will not be worrying about the Rona, which is just one thing that has happened. Because in Revelation, when the gray horse is riding, plagues and pestilences are global. You won't have time to go online and check out how's the Ebola crisis in Africa, because it will be Ebola crisis right outside your door, right outside my door. So let us be sober and know that a lot of adrenaline, a lot of speculation, and a lot of freaking out now doesn't help anyone because we really need to preserve the best of self for the times that are ahead. So when genes begin to express tendencies, this means that the organism is growing. And as the person grows, you will then begin to see same with the giants in history. The women didn't give birth to the giants that tore them and left them dead. No, the women gave birth to children who were just ordinary looking. And then they grew and began to express tendencies that no normal baby should be able to express. They began 
began to show through their size and their strength and how much they consumed and the feats that they were able to do as little ones, as toddlers growing up. And that is how they became known as the mighty men. One of the best examples of a mighty man from history is if you have read the life story of the man known as Hercules. Hercules can almost be said to be the exact carbon copy of the guy we know as Superman. Everybody knows the story of Superman, how he was a tiny little baby and he was heard outside laughing and playing. And when his parents came running to look at him, Superman was holding up his father's Megaton truck in one hand. So in one hand, he had his bottle and the other hand, all the super, all the superhero, um, comic book readers know exactly what I'm talking about. That scene in the old Superman comics, he lifted up his father's truck with one hand as an infant. He didn't even know it was supposed to be heavy. And that is when they knew this baby that we found cannot be a normal baby. So this is what God is talking about, that the DNA will begin to express in the end times and the further end times, strange tendencies that cannot be attributed to the normal growth pattern of what is known as humanity. He said that they will grow to eight feet tall, 10 feet tall or more, and that people are going to love them. So this is something that is even in this prophecy here that I will share. The Lord told me, Celestial, when the giants come on, on the scene, basically this is paraphrasing from here. When the giants come on the scene, the Nephilim return, they're not just going to burst out and be the 30 foot ones that we covered as we were doing Og of Bashan, 15 foot, 20 footers. They're not coming like that. People need to understand that Satan is extremely cunning and extremely wise. It always worries me when I see Christians talking about the devil as if he's just this childish thing. Oh no, the devil's under my feet. Yes, he is under your feet. But then you should always bear in mind that what you have under your feet is not an earthworm. It's actually a hundred foot ancient ageless dragon that is only under your feet because the Lord is giving you the power of the Lord Jesus Christ in those sandals of peace to keep him under your feet. Should you make any error? Should you start to move in pride and think that the reason that Satan is subjected to man is because of us, this perishable flesh, that dragon will roll and twist in an instant and pin you and then it's going to be a very different story. So they will start out the same as any normal child, but they will not stay that way. And what the Lord shared with me, um, September 28th, 2018 is that the wiliness and the cunningness of the enemy will not have the devil just bringing out normal, like biblical Nephilim these huge, huge beings and just be like, surprise. No, Satan is going to roll them out in stages. And the Lord said that to me in 2018 and then is repeating it here in 2022. He said, when they start, it will not be the fee fi fo fum crowd. So fee fi fo fum is from, I think the ancient storybooks where the giant was hunting a person, Jack and the Beanstalk, and Jack was hiding in the giant's house. When he had climbed the beanstalk, he's hiding in the giant's house and the, and the giant comes and smells. The giant comes and smells blood. Now Jack is not dead and Jack has not cut himself, but the giant says, fee fi fo fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. And this is one thing that they will have the ability to do. They will have unbelievable tracking abilities. And the Lord says they will even have supernatural abilities that will distinguish them from normal human flesh. Now we know in the Bible that blood has a signature. If you do not know, science has already proved that blood makes a sound, but God knew this because when Cain killed his brother Abel, God came to the scene and said, Cain, the blood of Abel is crying out to me from the ground. Blood has a frequency. Blood makes a sound. This is even alluded to in the scripture because we talk about the blood that makes atonement and the blood that speaks a better word for us. So to God, blood is alive. It has a frequency. It has a signature. It has a tone. And these spiritual beings are able to pick up 
on that at an even higher level. No wolf will tell you, I heard the blood of a human speaking in this forest. That's how I tracked them. The wolf is just following the scent of us as meat, as humanity. But these creatures can actually tune into the frequency of blood. And so the Lord is telling me that Satan will not start in the end days with the huge 15 and 20 footers. He says that he, they will bring out smaller people at first and they will be extremely agile. They will be extremely athletic. They will be extremely skillful, but they will also be very, very tall and shapely. And that will draw both women and men to them, women sexually attracted to them and men admiring them. So he said that these people are going to end up famous because if there's one thing humanity loves, it is a curiosity. And if you go online and you simply write giants or ancient giant people or use YouTube, I mean, use Google in a wise way, you will find that here in America, America has a very well-documented photographic history of people who were 11 and 12 feet tall. They know in this nation that there were people like that. And guess how they made a living? At the sideshows and the carnivals of America, those people were wealthy, they had their clothes specially tailored because you could not find clothing to cover 10 feet men and 11 feet women. And they traveled the length and the breadth of this country as curiosities. They were quite famous, huge men and women, and people would pay money to stand on a little stool next to them and take a picture. These pictures still exist on the internet today. And so just as the giants were famous in the United States for sure, in the past, this is not the distant past, this is just the recent last 100 years, they will be famous again. They will be the sportsmen. They will be doing extraordinary feats using their extraordinary size to draw quite a lot of fame and attention to themselves. But then the Lord says in this prophecy from 2018, the huge guys, the house smashing guys will come later but first it will be people in excess of seven and eight and nine feet tall, and they will be basketball stars and other celebrity types that people will be in love with them. They will marvel at these creatures and greatly want to be associated with them. They will be eight feet tall humans, perfect in appearance, so strong, so handsome, Everyone will be want to be, everyone will want to be associated with them, but you stay away from them as if I even need to be told. And so this will be the rise of the Nephilim. Amazing heights, amazing growth rates, soon outstripping any resemblance to people. So this is, you're looking with your eyes and you cannot lie to yourself that there is something distinctly different with these people. The Lord says that they will also be excessively hairy. They will have telltale signs, extra fingers, extra toes, extra teeth. The biblical giants were found to have double rows of teeth. So top row, bottom row, and then either on the outside like braces or on the inside like retainers or whatever, another set of teeth up and down. They will be very hairy and there will be other markers that will be revealed, including supernatural abilities. He said they will start off as sons and daughters being born to human women, but they are not of his flesh. My flesh is not in them. This is taking place around everywhere. This is not a future message or proclamation. This is a right now revelation. So please let us not think that Satan is just waiting and thinking, oh, soon, soon I will start. No, Satan has been so busy for so many centuries that the earth is already seeded with the other type of Nephilim that has learned to live with and blend with people and look exactly like us. The Lord revealed in, I think, one of the prophecies in the Alien series, Yes, it's called Aliens Among Us, Hiding in Plain Sight. And there the Lord revealed that you can roughly class these beings into two sections. They will either be of the robot variety. This is the ones that are made in labs. They are shells. They don't have organs. Their insides are filled with wires and microchips and other robot features. Yet the outside of them looks exactly like flesh. 
and they function in society and the only thing they can't do is procreate, but they can do everything else. And so they're at your job. I always call one of them Jared from accounting, handsome as anything. And then there's the other type of Jared from accounting that is um, a creature, an actual Nephilim creature that looks human and is sleeping with women to multiply their number. This one has seed. So the reason that the Lord spoke John 3, 16 is because the heart of God is the repentance of humanity so that we can be united with him eternally in his kingdom. The blood of Jesus Christ was only shed for human beings. It wasn't shed for creatures. It wasn't shed for Satan. It wasn't shed for fallen angels who cried and tried to beg Enoch to get God to take them back. It was only shed for man. But should man become corrupted? So should man mate with anything else that is not man and bring progeny into this world that is not man. There is no salvation for them. I don't care how cute they are looking in their blankets and their onesie and on your breast. As the Lord said, women have brought forth monstrous creatures and held them at the breast and loved them. So this world, as we have, we're shocked and thinking, what is this woman talking about? And yet since the ancient days, since the ancient days, the Lord is revealing in his word that this has happened. Guess what? Goliath had a mom. He did not drop from the sky. Goliath with his double rolls of teeth and his six fingers and his six toes that fought human David, who only had five fingers and five toes each. Goliath had a mother. There was no uh, baby formula in those days. Goliath drank at somebody's breast. So none of what I am saying is brand new. This is history repeated. And the Lord even had me go through the book of Enoch just before I start. And one thing I noticed there is the Bible says that the rule of the giants increased until men died. And here is a direct quote from Enoch. The giants increased until men died. And as men died, they cried and the cry rose up to heaven. Such a pitiful and hurtful statement. And yet, if you go to the book of Genesis chapter six, I mean, Genesis chapter five, just at the end, you will see there a curious statement. It says, and at that time, men began to call on the name of the Lord. So that is how the Bible translators put it at the end of Genesis chapter five, which is when there were already Nephilim in the earth ruling and persecuting human beings. They write it curiously as, and at that time, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. No, in light of what Enoch reveals, the correct rendering is at that time. The horrifying, dying screams of the earth began to ascend into heaven. Because you see later in the book of Enoch that Michael and Uriel and Gabriel are saying, observe the earth, which is being made without inhabitant. That is just a poetic way of saying, look, everyone on earth is being wiped out. When the earth is made desolate and without inhabitant, it means that people are being killed and removed and taken away. Satan is doing it in a new way. Pure and true humanity is being removed and taken away. Always go back to the words of Jesus if you want to know what I'm talking about on this channel. What did the Lord say? What did he ask his disciples when he was, giving, when he was talking about his return? Did he not say, will I even find faith on the earth? Traditionally in church, they're telling you, oh, Jesus is trying to find out if we're going to be faithful. And when he comes back, will he still find us keeping the faith and believing in him? The man is asking very practically, will there still be true flesh that is able to confess my name as God on this earth? when I return for he talks about a delusion so strong that if possible, even the elect will be deceived. We have not even entered the part where I'm reading out the transhumanist prophecies, transhumanist prophecies, another way that Satan will take away 
true humanity. How? By asking you if you want an upgrade, by asking you if you want to insert retina scanners into your eyes, because who uses glass? Glasses. Glasses are boring. Glasses are old tech. Let's get those retina scanners in there. Let's get these sil silicone chips into you that actually give you a ripped body because who has time for the gym? Let's do this and let's do that. And in all that, you are corrupting the temple within which the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit live. When this temple is corrupted, it will not enter into the fellowship promised us in John 3, 16. So the devil is diabolical, and yet the Lord cautioned us and said, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices, the devil's methodologies, the devil's overall plan. Do not sit in your defunct churches that are telling you that as soon as they do this and do that and get the political situation right, then everything is going to work out and we're going into bright and tender times. We are going into very distressing times. And the parent who is not aware of this, their daughter is going to bring Jared home. The parent who is not aware of this, your only son is going to bring Cynthia home. And the only problem is that after 17 years of marriage, there will be no baby either because Cynthia was born a man and didn't feel that he needed to disclose this or Cynthia is not a person. The possibility that Cynthia is just naturally barren will be quite small with where we're going. So may we take heed of the word of the Lord because the Lord loves his people and he does not want to see us destroyed. So this is just the part that the Lord says the revelation is true. This is a battle of seed. Angels took human women in the ancient days and made wives of all they chose. And they brought forth great giants and other supernatural beings into this earth. As it was in the days of Noah, I tell you, it already is again. Not it shall be. It already is again. Tell this to my people so that they will be careful who they mix with and mate with in these last days. For these beings are all around you. Synthetics, clones, robot people with no insides, only microchips and wired, specifically created to mate with man and corrupt the men and women of the end. Strange flesh is in the earth the mingling of iron with my clay. The human population will be stripped of its leadership rights. Strange flesh will mingle with my creation and bring forth beasts, n times Nephilim who mingle with the clay. Creatures will attempt to take the top places of society and to a very large extent they will be successful by reason of the abomination of desolation that causes man to corrupt my image in the temple. Do not be deceived. Whoever sows to Satan will reap destruction in the flesh before they reap destruction anywhere else. Stay holy under the blood of my son, Jesus Christ. So this is the word of the Lord. As you can see, one prophecy concerns contains so much information that I sometimes have to break it down and separate it and do prophecy part one and part two. And I always try not to do that, which is why if the video is long, just try to stick with it. This is Celestial and this is the master's voice. Please like the video. Please give it a thumbs up, not because the content is fantastic, but because it helps these videos go up in the algorithm so that more people, people who are perishing, please, if you are a parent, your child might be one of those who are out there, part of the UFO truther community, following after the fact that, oh, aliens are out there. Aliens are out there. They're just not what they're pretending to be. They're pretending to come that they will set up a utopia on this earth, but they are coming, as the Lord said, in desolations are determined, part five. That's another prophecy. They will press the flesh of man until life is extinguished from this planet. You don't even need a dictionary to know what press the flesh means. There's nothing positive about those connotations. It literally means to crush flesh. Daniel the prophet spoke of this. He said that the fourth beast that will arise upon the earth crushed the peoples and trampled the, rev the, re the residue with its feet, which means that it will be a crushing kingdom, a kingdom in which people almost feel that they can't breathe. But who will these people be feeling that they can't breathe? It will be those who love the Lord 
because those who love the beast will be breathing quite freely. They will not be suffering from any asthma attacks at the things that Satan will be introducing to the population. They will be lining up to take not only chips, but all kinds of bodily upgrades and integrate themselves into the beast. But that is corrupted humanity and cannot enter the presence of the Lord when he returns. So his question is as relevant now in 2022 as it was back then in whatever AD when he asked it, will I still find faith on the earth when I come? And the answer is each person will decide that for himself. Because if you are corrupted, if you are changed or your child changed, the entry into heaven is finished. You cannot cry away or pray away or repent away corruption. So that is all I will say. Like the video and um, I will try to make a second video before the light fades. God bless you. Thank you for supporting this channel. I always give thanks to those who find it in their hearts to support the channel. It is your free will choice. So God bless you and may the Lord uphold you and return it to you. Um, share these videos as you are led by the Holy Spirit. This is not the easiest content, but it is the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wants us to know all of this relates back to the fact that the father made a sacrifice to receive Adam and Eve back to himself. He lost us in the garden and Christ came to win us back to God. Satan's objective is to destroy the us-ness of us so that even with the sacrifice of Jesus existing in the earth, there will be less and less who choose Christ. This is what the devil is working for. And this is what is being exposed on this channel. So until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.